Hi everybody, this is Eric from Riggs Garage and today I want to show you how an engine dyno works. Now if you remember, um, I did a video on the Buick Grand National that Kindle is building. So there was a dyno day there. And while we were there, Doc, uh, the lead guy there, decided to share wisdom with us and show us how the engine dyno works. So he explained that and I took a video of it. So I figured since everybody likes to learn more about cars always that I would share it with you. So hopefully you like this. I'm gonna try to keep as much different content like this coming on the channel so you can learn along with me. So if you like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and I uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Here we are at Automotive Machine and Performance in Lawrence, Kansas. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. We really appreciate it. So you know how all this stuff works? No. Okay, basically it's like a torque converter okay. on an automatic transmission. So, so what you're doing is you're power braking the motor. So on the back of the motor, there's what's called the absorber, and it's basically a torque converter that's fed by what is, in essence, a shallow well jet pump. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with well pumps. Mm -hmm. That's basically what's on the back feeding this torque converter. Okay. okay? So what it's doing is outside the wall there, there's a thousand gallon tank that feeds water into these pumps here. And the one pump pushes it in uh -huh. to just a reservoir. And then that shallow well pump picks up the water right there and squirts it into the absorber, which works like a torque converter. So what it's doing is it's trying to shear that water, just like a torque converter. So what's gonna, it goes, it feeds the water into there and then the water that comes out of it dumps into the second tank and our other bigger pump sucks the water back out and puts it back in the reservoir so it's circulating. The other thing it does is we take some of that water and bring it up here and feed it into this cooling tower. So all it is just a water and water heat exchanger. So once we cool. fill the engine, it's separate from our tank. So if, basically if anything happens there, you're not cross-contaminating. <clears throat> Plus, you yeah. can regulate, this thing's got a thermostat in it that regulates the temperature and keeps it cool. where we want it. So you can get it up to operating temperature without exactly, actually without cooling having it. to heat the whole damn tank. Right, right. So, so basically how this thing works is when you give it throttle, you'll push it all the way open, full throttle, and the computer has a control valve on the bottom outlet of that torque mm -hmm. So it's just like in a car, stepping on the gas, and having whatever stall converter I set it at. Like right now we're gonna pull down to 3600 RPM. So I say you got a 3600 stall converter, mm -hmm. you smash on the gas and you've got enough brakes to hold this thing and not let it go. That's what we're doing right off the bat. And then when you push the go button, it releases that valve and the computer opens that valve at a preset rate, however many RPM per second we want it to accelerate. So then it starts opening that valve, just like letting your foot off the brake gradually while you're smashing it to the floor and off you go. So what it's doing is when I send it in the pull, we're already at full throttle. The dyno is holding it back and then it allows it to accelerate at a given rate. Yeah. And then on the side of the absorber, there's a strain gauge, which is exactly the same thing. It's in like an electronic scale, a bathroom scale. So it's just a gauge there that strains, the thing's oh. torquing like this, and it's got a little gauge on it mm -hmm. that sends the signal to the computer, and it takes that torque reading from that thing being stretched is how much torque the engine's making, and it yep. takes all the parameters. It takes the RPM, the torque, and the acceleration rate that's pre-programmed in, and it calculates that into horsepower, because horsepower is a made-up number. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's it's taking all those parameters along with everything else and calculates the horsepower. And when you watch here, this one here is actual horsepower generated, which would be they call it indicated. So what that is is the real deal horsepower, which weather's good enough now, it's pretty damn close. There's not a lot of correction. Right. So there's several different kinds of horsepower. There's indicated, which is actual horsepower right there, and then there's corrected horsepower with SAE numbers, and then there's other types of corrections, but it corrects everything automatically to sea level. So that everything that you read on a dyno is corrected to sea level, so it reads the same. 
So no matter where you dyno something, it's already corrected to mm -hmm. sea level. Now so brake horsepower is that where does that same. Re that's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. But there's there's several different uh, different horsepower uh, ratings. So it's SAE and then specific brake horsepower. It's the last engine you did for me. Oh, cool. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Got paid. Cool. Pat will be all happy. So anyway, the, the, basically the one that's standard for everything is just uh, uh, SAE corrected horsepower. So, so when it when it we make a pull and it prints it out, that's what we'll get. So I guess we're ready to make a pull here. So we'll do a cool. short one to warm up. And, and this is a super flu. That's the dyno type. Yeah. Basically, the 901 means this thing's rated to handle 900 pound feet of torque. Because on the on the dyno, it's irrelevant what the horsepower is. Right. It's how much torque that strain gauge can take. That's what breaks stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the torque is the fun factor. Yeah. So on the street, good. usually, you know, because you're going to have the torque is what's going to move the car. Right. If you're if you're drag racing, you're worried about the horsepower on the big end. Right. But you're still worried about that torque down low to get the car moving. Thanks, Doc, for sharing with us. Sometimes it's just better to have somebody who does this every day describe this to us instead of me reading through a ton of articles and stuff and trying to put together a video um he just explained it to us it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward uh, i like it thanks for watching everybody